Hi everyone, I'm Min ji from Carnegie Mellon University. Today I'm going to talk about our work, Collaborate with LinkedIn, Performance Adaptive Sampling Strategy for Fast and Accurate Graph Neural Networks. Recently, Graph Convolution Network has garnered a huge attention across industry and academia as a powerful deep learning tool for representation learning of graph data. However, when we try to apply GCN to large-scale real-world graphs, including 700 million size member-to-member -member LinkedIn network, we found out that it's not scalable enough. The main scalability issue of GCN comes from uncontrollable neighborhood expansion in the aggregation stage. When the average degree is D, L-layer GCNs need to assess D to the L neighbors per node. For instance, when a graph has average degree 10, Three layer GCNs need to assess 1000 neighbors per node. And this uncontrollable neighborhood expansion make a GCN to cost high computation and memory footprints and make it not scalable enough to apply to real world graphs. Many approaches have been proposed to solve this problem and the most simple and brute force solution is sampling. So we limit the neighborhood expansion by simply sampling a fixed number of neighbors in the aggregation operation. And we can easily regulate the computation time and memory by uh, changing the sampling number. And current sampling based GCN could be categorized into two types. First one is random sampling, including graph stage. Second one is important sampling, fast GCN, Redis, AES GCN, and GCN BS. And those important sampling try to approximate the original aggregation of full neighborhood by minimizing the variance in sampling. That means they try to give high sampling probability to neighbors which are helpful for variance reduction in sampling. And this kind of approaches have two limitations. First one is low accuracy because all the sampling policy, either random or variance reduction based, those policies are agnostic to the performance. And second, uh, they are vulnerable to noise and adversarial attacks. Sampling policies cannot distinguish relevant neighbors from irrelevant ones because they only care about it, uh, it is helpful for variance reduction or not. So they don't check if those neighbors are true or adversarially added fake one. Then we ask, Okay, then what is the optimal sampling for GCNs? And we want to go back to the motivation of aggregation operation in GCN, which is the one key point of GCN's operation. In GCN, its node aggregate its neighbor's embedding, assuming that neighbors are informative for the target task. For example, when LinkedIn tried to make a job recommendation for Minji, it's not only look into Minji's information, but it also refer its neighbors' uh, information because we think those uh, colleagues who work in the same company or who study in the same field must helpful to make a job recommendation. Unfortunately, real world graphs are noisy. In LinkedIn, people make connection not only with their coworkers or collaborators who study in the same field, but also with their personal friends or family members who work in a totally different field. That means not every neighbors are informative for the target task, so not neighbors are worth enough to aggregate to gather better information. So here comes our uh, definition of optimal sampling for GCN. We think optimal sampling is to sample neighbors informative for the target task. So here, we aim for a sampler that maximizes the target task performance. We want a sampler to sample uh, the neighbors of Minji who work in the same field, not sample neighbors who have totally different career paths from Minji. So until now, I described why we need performance adaptive sampling strategy for GCN. And now I'm going to talk about our proposed sampler, PASS, which stands for Performance Adaptive Sampling Strategy for GCNs. The PASS goal is to sample neighbors informative for the target task. And to do that, we need to train a sampler that directly maximizes the GCN performance. So first, I'm going to talk about our learnable sampling policy function. So we define a parameterized sampling policy QLJ given I, 
which estimate the probability of sampling node Vj given node i at the Lth layer of GCN. And this sampling policy is composed of important sampling and random sampling. The important sampling is computed by a dot product of embeddings of node Vj and node Vi in a projected embedding. And the random sampling is simply giving the same sampling probability for uh, the source node neighbors. And we uh, combine them using attentions uh, by the learnable attention vector AS. So here we define our sampling policy using both important sampling and random sampling because it is most general uh, generalized to different kind of graphs. For example, when a graph is noise, important sampling helps differentiate related and unrelated neighbors. But when a graph is already well clustered and nodes are already all connected with all informative neighbors, the randomness from the random sampling help aggregate diverse neighbors, while important sampling only uh, aggregate neighbors from a fixed set of neighbors. But because we don't know graph is already well clustered or not, uh, we try to learn uh, through the attention of sampling AS to find which sampling methodology is more effective for a given graph. And also we want to note that we share parameters of the sampling policy across all edges, which help to generalize and prevent the sampling policy from overfitting to the training set. So I have talked about our learnable sampling policy function, and now I'm gonna talk about how to train the parameters of this sampling policy to make them directly maximize the GCM performance. And first I'm gonna talk about this, uh, the overview of sampling, how sampling policy work in uh, GCMs. The step one is we generate a small size computation graph using sampling policy. Given a source node, we sample neighbors layer by layer uh, using our sampling policy. And then after acquiring this small size computation graph, we do fit forward propagation in the bottom up manner. And finally, in the back propagation phase, we update the parameters using gradient of the loads in the top down manner. And here we want to update the parameters of both GCN and sampling policy using gradient of the performance loads. When we make this process more uh, mathematically, here is our equation. So the sampling policy, the sampling operation is presented as follow. After the neighbors are sampled by sampling policy Q theta, we, uh, we average the sampled neighbors embedding and then pass over to the transformation and nonlinear units in GCN. And this is the part where the gradient of loads pass through the non-differentiable sampling operation E to update our sampling policy. And how can we pass over through them? We answer the, that question in our theory on full point work one. So you can see more details in our papers. So simply, we apply the log derivative trick, which is widely used in reinforcement learning to compute gradient of stochastic policies. So by theorem 4.1, uh, the gradient of GCN's performance loss pass to the sampling policy and optimize sampling policy directly for the GCN performance. And then we want to discuss about some theoretical analysis we conducted on this sampler. When we give a sampler to users, sampler, uh, the users are curious about exactly how does this sampler learn whether neighbor is informative for target task and why this sampler assign a certain sampling probability to neighbors. And through, uh, in our theory on 5.1, we show that pass our sampler decides a neighbor node Vj is informative when its embedding Hj is aligned with the gradient uh, of loss with regard to the source node Hi. And also pass increase the sampling probability of node J, the neighbor node J, in proportion to the dot product of the gradient with regard to the source node and 
the neighbor's embedding HJ. So it sounds a little bit complicated, but let me explain it more intuitive way. During backpropagation step, node embedding HI is moved in the direction that minimizes the performance loss L uh, using the gradient. And in graph convolution network, we have aggregation operation, which also help node embeddings to move. So for example, when H2 is aggregated with H3, which is aligned with the gradient, it helps to move in the direction that reduces the loss L more easily. Otherwise, when H2 aggregated with H5, because H5 is not aligned with the gradient, H2 or ends up move in the reverse direction that reduces the loss L. So we can see that it's better to choose H3 because it helps H2 move in the direction where the loss is reduced. So we think we show that our sampling policy choose neighbors whose embedding is aligned with the gradient, so help the source uh, source node embedding to move to reduce the loss more effectively. So this analysis allows us to understand two main ideas. First is functionality of aggregation operations in GCNs. Aggregation operation is not only uh, just aggregate information from neighbors, but it helps to uh, move node embeddings to reduce the performance loss more easily. And it also shows the strengths of joint optimization of GCN and sampling policy, because previously GCN relied only on its parameters to minimize the performance loss to move the node embeddings. But here, because we optimize GCN and sampling policies jointly, both parameters work together to minimize loss and make a go to minimum loss more easily. So we have shown our, uh, introduced our proposed method and some theoretical backgrounds on uh, behind this sampling policy. And here I'm going to introduce some experimental result. So we conduct semi-supervised node classification task on seven public data set and two LinkedIn data set. We compare our sampler with two node-wide samplers, two layer-wide samplers, and one attention method. And when we compare with other samplers, we set a unified time complexity bound across all samplers. That means when we set the batch size set to 64, we set, uh, we set layer wide samplers to sample 64 nodes per layer, while node wide samplers sample one neighbor per node. So they're sampling 64 nodes per layer in total. And under this a unified time complexity bound, uh, we can compare their accuracy. And also, our main point of this experiment is we do evaluation with sampling. In many previous work, they train their graph uh, neural network with sampling in the training phase, and in evaluation phase, they use full neighborhood. But we believe prohibited time and memory costs from the full neighborhood expansion are still existing uh, during test. So that's why we sample both during training and testing, and we found out that there are a significant drop in accuracy for certain baseline, especially layer-wide samplers, when they uh, sample during evaluation time. So here is our first experimental result. As you can see, uh, across all sampling uh, methods, which have the same sampling complexity bound, PES shows the highest accuracy among all baseline across all data sets. And layer-wise methods show lower accuracy than node-wise methods. You can find more discussion about why this happened in our paper. And the second test is to measure robustness. To measure robustness, we conduct two different node scenarios. First one is fake connections among existing nodes. This simulates connection made by mistake or unfit for purpose like connection between family members or personal friends in a job search platform. And the second scenario is fake neighbors with random fe uh, feature vectors. This simulates fake accounts with random attributes used for fraudulent activities. For each node, we generate five true neighbors and five fake neighbors 
and see how sampling policies distinguish them. And as you can see, across both scenarios, only pass, uh, our sampler pass show the high uh, accuracy while all other samplers show a huge drop in accuracy. And this shows that PASS knows which neighbors are informative for the target and which neighbors are fake or which neighbors are true neighbors. And one of our future work is extend our sampler to detect fake page or fake account. And our third experiment is comparison with graph attention network. As you can see, a uh, graph attention network also has similar idea. It tried to give different attention to neighbors, uh, considering their importance with regard to the source node. However, PASS is the sampling method which, uh, can min which can regulate the computation graph, while GET, because it's attention-based method, it needs to hold the whole graph while training GCNs. To help you understand these differences more intuitively, let's do theoretical, uh, let's do thought experiment. Let's say batch size 64, set the sampling number one for pass, and set the average degree uh, 15 for a given graph, and there is three layer GCN. For pass, the nodes we need to assess in one batch is 64 nodes in the first layer, 64 nodes in the second layer, 64 nodes in the third layer. So it's end up approximate 200 nodes. And the adjusting matrix we need to deal with in a batch is uh, 10 to the fourth scale. On the other hand, graph attention network, we need to we, which need to hold the whole neighborhood during the graph convolution network computation time, the number of nodes they need to assess is 15,000 and the scale of their adjusted matrix handling in one batch is 10 to the eighth scale. And when we run them on the real world data set, we could see that the pass is, a, while pass is scalable across all data set, get runs out of memory on four out of seven data sets. And pass one, which sample one neighbor per node, shows lower accuracy, while shows much faster training and test time than gets. When we trade off the speed for accuracy and make pass five, which samples, which samples five neighbors per node, we could see that pass five shows still maintaining shorter training and test time than get, but shows comparable or even higher accuracy than gets. This shows that pass is not only understand which neighbors is in important for its source node, but also it helps to be more scalable. So let's conclude our work. Here, we propose performance adaptive sampling pass, which learns to sample neighbors informative for the target task. And pass is, shows is effective on the real world data set, being up to 10% more accurate and show its robustness showing up to 53% higher accuracy than the state of the art baseline in the presence of adversarial attacks. Finally, uh, we show concrete theoretical foundation on our sampling policy, showing how our sampling policy learns whether a neighbor is informative. Thank you for listening to our presentation and happy to answer any questions.